Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas and I'm a professional portrait and fashion photographer based out of New York City. And in today's video, we're going to go ahead and pick up where we last left off after discussing what color management is. We're going to take those principles and discuss how we're going to apply those into working in the studio. Now, one of the first things that I mentioned about media, like the screen on the back of your camera, your computer, or your TV, is that most devices display colors as a mixture of red, green, and blue, which is called RGB. The color space sRGB, which has been the industry standard color profile for monitors for years, so more than likely, unless you've invested into a monitor like this CG248, you're probably not seeing the Adobe RGB color space and the colors that it produces. Now, that's important to remember if you're planning to edit your images in the Adobe RGB color space for the event that you're gonna go ahead and print. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and break down the steps you should be taking when you're trying to manage color in your studio, starting with your environment. In a perfect world, you should be viewing all of your devices, like the camera, the computer, your prints, under the same light source and under the same color temperature. Why? Well, our eyes adapt very well to different lighting conditions. So for example, say you're in a room filled with tungsten light and everybody's skin tone appears to be the same colors. That poses a problem in editing. So while our eyes can adapt to these different lighting conditions, we perceive displays as different colors. Let's look at a quick example. We have two matching gray circles on your screen. Both are the same color gray, both have the same level of brightness, but if we introduce cyan and orange to represent color temperature, we can see how the level of brightness and tone seems to change in the image. And this is exactly what happens with our eyes all the time. So imagine you're taking photographs in a room lit by tungsten light. You look at the back of the camera, you have beautiful, vibrant colors. You run home, you edit those same photographs and colors, and you look at the exposure, they look completely differently than they did in the studio. You adjust them to look at the way they did at the studio, you print your image, you run back to the studio, and the image looks vastly different than it did the first time you looked at them. So what changed? Well, first, it was the fact that the lighting condition in both rooms were completely different, which made you change the colors to replicate what you saw at the studio before. And this is a specific example of two major ways that your colors are shifting. And the point is you should always look at your images in the same lighting conditions. In addition to light, you should always avoid looking at your images in a room painted with vibrant, bright colors. The color cast produced by the walls change the way that you perceive color. Simply put, you should always have continuity in the way that you're looking at your images from start to finish. So before we begin shooting, it's important to remember that color consistency is what we're focusing on in these videos. I can't stress that enough. But I mentioned in the first video that color management and being color correct are two vastly different things, and that's absolutely true. But they do work hand in hand. Now, all displays show colors differently. In terms of photography, it doesn't matter what camera you choose. Regardless of the manufacturer, all camera models shift in color from one display to the next. This is why using things like color checkers are extremely important. Now, while a gray card is gonna provide you with correct white balance in your image, a color checker is going to allow you to create a custom profile for your camera and lens combination. This ensures that red is red, blue is blue, and so on, no matter what camera or lens you're using. Tethering is an extremely important uh, way to manage color. So let's pretend for a second that your workflow is simply importing images directly into Adobe Lightroom using a CF card reader. Well, those of you that follow that workflow, you'll quickly notice that the previews on the back of your cameras may not match what they're rendering like in Adobe Lightroom. That's simply because your camera and the editing software are using two entirely different ways of interpreting the data of your image. Out of the box, most DSLRs are set to add more saturation and contrast, which sounds like a great thing in theory, but it leads to false representation of color. And that means that out of the box, your images aren't color correct. And that's why a lot of photographers will choose to tether to their computer and directly import their images into Adobe Lightroom or Capture One. 
That way you're making sure that color and exposure adjustments are based off of a more reliable monitor. Now, most monitors aren't going to be very reliable out of the box without proper calibration. And I'm gonna explain that in the editing portion of these segments. So what did we learn today? Well, first, you wanna make sure that you're viewing your back of your cameras, your computers and the prints under the same lighting conditions so we have color consistency. Second, you wanna make sure that you have a color checker. That way you can be sure the colors are color correct throughout the whole photography process. Finally, you shouldn't judge your images based off the back of your camera. When you have the ability to tether, do so. And that, my friends, is a quick introduction to color management on set. Again, my name is Jeff Rojas and you're watching Kiss Photo, where we make photography easy. Now, thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video and you're watching it on Facebook, please share it with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have a great day.